obtain a medical cannabis patient ever take of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, a threat of some both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and older. So today I want to do a video for cannabis and spirituality, and I wanted to talk to you guys about ways you can tell how to heal yourself <coughs> right now. And other than just having drinking some specific herbal concoctions and things like that, or um, going for a walk, there's some actual uh, things you can key into to find out why you're feeling the way that you are. Why do you have a broken leg? Why is your heart hurting all the time? Why do you have heart palpitations? Uh, this book by Luis L. Hay, You Can Heal Your Life, is a really good book. And in the spirit of Sagittarius, there was a really cool Sagittarius lady that uh, recommended this book to me. She loaned me her book and I read through it and so then I went out and buy, bought a copy. This was years ago. Um, I agree with a lot of what's in there, not everything, but I agree with most of what's in this book. And it's a very empowering book. It's helping you to take back control of your body, your mind, and your soul. So this is the book. I've showed this book before, I think on my Dark Moon Doll channel. But I felt like I'd bring it back out again. I'm sure it's still in publication. Because I think this is a Hay House publication. And Hay House is still going in full effect as a, as far as I know. I might be wrong. And this, her name is Louise L. Hay. That's the name of the uh, writer. I guess that was her publication that started all of this. Basically, uh, the Hay House is pretty much um, metaphysical books. Um type of books like that, um, self-help books, things of that nature, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I wanted to show, read to you some of the stuff in here that could be life-changing for you, that can help you, um, especially with all the bullshit that's going on with, uh, that main event that occurred, uh, I think it was in March that it all started for us here, uh, it's, it's really made people feel scattered and not sure what they should be doing, and also, they've been feeling uh, a lot of pain and distress in their body from working really hard and feeling like they're not doing enough. So, um, this is a really good book for that, to really love yourself and give yourself the time and attention that you need to take out that time and to really focus on you. So, I'm going to read a little bit of stuff in here. I'm going to grab something to smoke. I'll be right back. <laughs> Alright, as I was going to go get some herb to start off this uh, smoke session, cannabis and creativity, someone came, or, or na my neighbor was nice and brought me some, some shake that he, um, that he acquired, and uh, very nice, nice blessing, he's a sweetheart, I gave him a joint once when he was down and out, when he was really, his face was all puffy, he had gotten in a fight. And then, um, <clears throat> I gave him, recently gave him some edibles that I made to help him out, because he's having some hard times, so, it's nice to help out a neighbor, you know? And then the neighbor helped me out, because <laughs> I was running low on, on, uh, on trimmed at raw joints, and yeah! <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, things, uh, are crazy and topsy-turvy in this world right now. But if we can do things to help each other out as best we can, even if you help out just one neighbor, um, that's always a good thing to to do, you know? If you can help somebody. And I feel good when I can help somebody, you know? So I'm going to grind up this beautiful um, trim and make a little joint from it. I might even roll up enough to make him a joint because he's so nice. He probably, I don't know, maybe he does roll joints, I don't know. I don't know much about my neighbors around here. We pretty much, well, I mean, there's certain neighbors that really socialize a lot. Um, I pretty much stay to myself around here in this neighborhood. But indoors, uh, it's my own little sanctuary here. <laughs> yep, so. Alright, I ground up enough herb to make one joint. So I'm just going to make one joint for this channel. I mean, for this, for this channel. <laughs> We know I've made more than one joint for this channel, <laughs> looking at my past videos. No, I'm just going to make one joint for this show today, so that's what I was saying.
it smells really good. I don't know what the strain is. It might be a combination of things. Um, it's always nice when you get a gift like this. This happened to us uh, not too long ago. We got some, um, we got a gift from a friend of my, uh, a friend of my husband's. He's now a friend of mine because uh, I got a chance to talk to him when I was uh, playing in a band ages ago. I was singing in a band, playing, singing mainly, playing the triangle, <laughs> but mainly singing, doing lead vocals for in a band. And um, he came and saw us and supported us, so. and then he gave us a glass bond. But anyway, back to my neighbor. It was really nice of him to bring us this. I, I appreciate it. It's nice. It's nice when people um, care about you. And you don't even think that, you know, you do a nice deed for somebody and then they come back and do something for you. You don't do deeds just to expect something to happen. You do things because out of the kindness of your heart. And then these kind of things happen naturally, right? Right. <laughs> Man, that smells really good. I feel really blessed right now. This is a good Monday. <laughs> it's not a manic Monday, thank God. <laughs> Might be a manics Monday. <laughs> You know who Mannix is. Oh, I've got some roaches in here. Let me take those out so that I can save those to re -roll, roll them for bigger joints. I'm going to make some huge magars today out of roach weed. If you guys want to watch that, give this a thumbs up and say yes. Make the big magar roach weed joints. Well, no, it's not a It can't be a joint if it's a magar. So. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I rolled it too tight. Hold up, bub. I called you bub. <laughs> Hold up, bub. Where am I from? Australia? <laughs> I started watching the next season of uh, Wentworth, speaking of Australia. That's decent. It has a nice flavor to it. I'm going to drop some ash on myself, right? <laughs> it's got a nice flavor to it. I like it. <coughs> Thanks, neighbor. <coughs> <coughs> Maybe I'll roll them a joint with some of this and I'll put some um put some concentrate or some reclaim on it. Make them a super charge charge joint with it. You'll love that. Yeah. I like doing nice things for people. And it's nice meeting other people that are the same way, you know. I gotta relight this. A little too tight. I got a little distracted from today's show, but beautiful distraction, unexpected, but yeah. It's got a, it's got a sweet flavor to it, and I can't trace it. I can't trace the strain at all. It's got a nice oil ring on there. stuff. All right, let's get into this this show. Uh oh, I don't want my joint to fall over. Let's put it over here. So, <laughs> um, I'm just gonna pick a page in this, and I'm gonna read something to you. And I want to see if this rings true for you. If you can feel this. So, and this is chapter four. When I read through this whole book, <clears throat> I read through the whole book from front to back. And then I started to take my time with each one because these are like lessons and they have actual individual, um, they have actual individual exercises in it, meditations and things like that and affirmations. So it's, this chapter is chapter four saying, is it true? Truth is the unchangeable part of me. <clears throat> the question, is it true or real? It has two answers, yes and no. Is it true if you believe it to be true? It is not true if you believe it isn't true. The glass is both half and, f I mean, the, the glass is both half full and half empty. Excuse, excuse me. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. There are literally billions of thoughts we can choose to think. 
most of us choose to think the same things, same kind of thoughts our parents used to think. But we don't have to com continue to do this. There is no law written that says we can only think in one way. Whatever I choose to believe becomes true for me. Whatever you choose to believe comes, becomes true for you. Our thoughts can be totally different. Our lives and experiences are totally different. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with that. Okay, examine your thoughts. Whatever we believe becomes true for us. If you have a sudden financial disaster, then on some level you may believe you are unworthy of being comfortable with money, or you believe in burdens and debt, or if you believe that nothing good ever lasts, maybe you believe that life is out to get you, or as I hear so often, I just can't win. So, um, do you feel that way? Um, I don't feel that way, I just feel like there's challenges in my way, and if I'm in a more relaxed and mellow uh, state of mind, then I'm able to you know, figure out how to solve whatever problems arise. You know, I'm not going to jump and be impulsive and just do any old thing. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Being impulsive and just reacting without thinking things through. And really believing, <clears throat> believing things that aren't true about you is not healthy. But how do you know it's not true about you, about you if you have a low self-esteem? And a lot of people these days are suffering from a low self-esteem, it seems. Um, even though they know the answers to the questions, they still doubt themselves. Why do they doubt themselves? Because of this bullshit, scary shit that's going on right now. Everybody's afraid. Everybody wants to hide in their home. Everybody wants to, like, <clears throat> feel safe again. Um, there's a way to feel safe again, even though you're in the midst of all this bullshit. And as I've said before, many times before, you got to find some time in your day and your night to meditate. And now more than ever, it's very important. So if you're not taking time to meditate and getting away from all the, the craziness in life, then you're not going to be feeling really well going through this life path, your spiritual path. You're going to be stumbling continuously. <clears throat> I'm having... I'm not having an easy road. I'm not saying my road's easy, but I'm saying it becomes easier when I take time out and analyze what's going on in my world and not just keep going through the motions and, and walking through life like a zombie. So, <clears throat> so here we go. Um, if you have poor health, you may believe illness runs in our family or that you are a victim of the weather or perhaps it's I was born to suffer or it's just one thing after another. Or you may have a different belief. Perhaps you, you're you not even aware of your belief. Most people really aren't. That's true. Some people don't, don't believe in themselves because they don't know who they are. How can I believe in someone I don't really know? <laughs> and the best person to get to know is you, is yourself. So, where was I? They just see the outer circumstances as being the way the cookie crumbles or the curl of the burl, right? those Mastodon fans out there. <laughs> Mastodon is a really kick-ass band, metal band, so anyway. <laughs> Alright, all right. <clears throat> what else? Until someone can show you the connection between the outer experiences and the inner thoughts, you remain a victim in life. It's true. Okay, so the problem, financial disaster, belief, I am not worthy of having money, no friends, nobody loves me, problems with work, I'm not good enough. Always pleasing others. I never get my way. Whatever the problem is, it comes from a thought pattern. And thought patterns can be changed. It may feel it may feel true. It may seem true. All these problems we're wrestling with and juggling in our lives. However, no matter how difficult an issue we are dealing with, it is only an outer result of the effect of inner thought pattern. I'll leave it with that. That says it all, right? It's all our thoughts. It's all starting in our head. Every thought we have is creating our reality. And that's something I've always thought ever since I was a child. I felt that. I felt that and I actually observed it, too. So, what we believe becomes reality. What we believe about ourselves 
we believe about everything we see out in the world, it all starts with a thought in our head. And I've said this a gazillion times. I knew this stuff before I started reading books like this. I, about, I found this book back in, <clears throat> I think, 2005 or 2004 when my friend introduced me to this book. Really kind Sagittarius. It's Sagittarius season. Sagittarius are rocking it this month and into the next month a little bit. Yeah, into December a little bit. Yeah, um, but... <clears throat> Yeah, she, she it helped her out, and she was dealing with like she had bolo, she has bipolar disorder, and she was she just offered me up that book to look at. I don't have bipolar disorder. I was diagnosed with PTSD, so um, that's what I've got going on. And the psychologist said I might have social anxiety as well. But um, yeah, I hope that helped anybody out there that need to hear that because um, sometimes. You start to believe things about yourself that aren't true. Then when you start believing things about yourself that you that aren't true, you start to turn into somebody else. And it's not really you. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, I was in a relationship where I devoted all my time to that one person and I lost who I was within the relationship. And I didn't know who I was at all. You know, I was just, I was just always trying to please that one person and make sure that person was happy <clears throat> and had everything they needed because I felt sad for their situation. And I got to know the person, found out about their childhood, and it gave me, it gave me a reason in that, in that time, felt like it gave me a reason to drop everything I'm doing and just concentrate on this one person. But in the end, what happened is that person wasn't used to having being loved and and appreciated, um, you know, like non unconditionally, unconditional love. So that person didn't know how, what to think about that and how to deal with that. But as I kept trying to nourish this person and nurture this person and and give them all the give that person all the love that I have. That person was becoming healed and I was becoming ill because I was neglecting what I'm passionate about in life. I stopped running. I was a runner way back when. I stopped running. <clears throat> I stopped, uh, I stopped um, doing art, creating art every day. I stopped um, writing in my journal because that person started reading my journal and I felt like it was being invaded. And it was just crazy. After that relationship was over, I had to rebuild myself and figure out who I was again. And how did I do that? I did that with books like this <clears throat> and others that I've uh, I've come across. I felt like these books, I was led to these books. <clears throat> I was led to these books. These are That's a self-help book. And it could be seen as being metaphysical because some of the, some of the topics she explains in there have been uh, posed by those who study metaphysics and um, <clears throat> very spiritual too, uh, spiritual wisdom within that book as well. And it helps you to realize that we are in control of our thoughts. When you're in control of your thoughts, then you won't material, things that you don't want to see won't materialize as easily, you know what I'm saying? So, I hope that helps you guys, it helps you to stay focused and not um, get too down and out. We're here on this planet at this time for a reason. You must know that because all the crazy shit that's going on, <clears throat> the technology, the everything, the the deceit, the disclosure, all the stuff that's happening right now, you were born to be here right now. And if you weren't supposed to be here right now, you wouldn't be here. So I have to tell myself that. And when I tell myself that, I realize, yes, yeah, stay on the course. Stay on your spiritual path and do what's right for you in this lifetime. And that's what I would suggest to you guys. Spend some time with yourself and really get to know who you are. Don't lose yourself in things. Keep who you are intact. <laughs> it's really important these days. Because there's a lot of people just mimicking each other. Stealing people's stories and shit. Making TV shows off of it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, 
Well, that's it. Thanks for joining me, guys. If you want to donate to this channel, you can go to my Cash App, my Google Pay, or my PayPal, <clears throat> and uh, donate. And then I will create a video for you of a topic of your choosing, or I could create a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork for you. So I make. Uh, I also make bookmarks. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so anyway, brightest blessings to y'all. I'll see you soon, and have a wonderful day afternoon or evening.